Hey guys, on today's episode, we're going over the step-by-step -step process for restoring worn out and cracked leather seats in your car. Now, the cool part is it typically costs less than half the price of replacement leather pieces on your seat, which is pretty cool. We're gonna talk about that today on this episode of Drive and Protect. As some of you may know, I drove the Audi R8 in the Bull Run Rally across the country in 2008 and fell in love with the car. This road, I don't know if you can see it, it looks like the road to Oz. I think I actually see the Emerald City up there. Ten years later, I finally bought my own in Atlanta and drove it straight home. Since then, I've driven it weekly to and from the ammo studio, which has accumulated a lot of ins and outs of the side bolster, causing unnatural cracking over time. Keep in mind, it's okay for leather to crease and naturally wear over the years. That's what makes leather so comfy, but cracking and losing its dye is not a good look. But this is where Brian from Fibernew came in to help repair the seat in just a few hours for less than half the cost of replacing the leather completely. Now, if you remember, Brian re-dyed the interior of a BMW to a completely different color in an episode last year. Click the link above to check it out. For the record, this video is not gonna make you an expert in 15 minutes. However, it will give you a better understanding of how professionals do professional level work, which separates them from everything else. Again, these techniques, tools, and products Brian is teaching me are proprietary Fibernew restoration products exclusive to Fibernew franchisees, which are located over the US and Canada. Think of them sort of like how Stanley Steamer is to carpets, but these guys are the pioneers in leather, plastic, and vinyl restoration around the world. Here's what they do. First, we remove the seats because it was easy. Now, this isn't always necessary to remove it, but because I'm filming and it took two minutes to do, why not? Now the first real step is cleaning. I mean really, really deep cleaning. When you think you're done, do it again type cleaning, that's what we needed to do. Then we dried with a lint-free shop towel and compressed air. Once clear of any body oils or leather moisturizers, you can really see the extent of the cracking, the worn off dye, the scratches, and so on that make the interior feel sort of old and definitely devalue the car. Next, I taped off the covered plastic parts that didn't require dye and put a plastic baggie over the seat belt. Then you're gonna clean it again, wipe it down, and then afterwards dry it with a hair blower. Just like a body shop is to paint, leather and dye repair is equally fastidious about working clean to ensure a quality finished product. Step four is sanding with 320 grit sandpaper, which I've never done before. It's a really wild feeling sanding dye. I guess you could consider it the same concept as paint, but instead of the white clear coat slurry coming off, you get these little chunks of chewed up dye. As you can see, the original leather color is starting to come through as Brian is sanding off the top layer of dye. Again, the same concept as seeing the primer or the metal when you burn through automotive paint. The seat bottom had always had a gouge in it from when I bought it. Now to fix it, I used a bit of leather adhesive on the tip of this dentist looking tool for pinpoint accuracy. Once dried, I sanded the seat bottom to blend the flap in with the surrounding areas before we attempted the redye. Now overall, do you see the larger wear marks in the seat and the side bolsters? This is normal, natural, and expected on worn-in leather and will not be repaired with a re-dye or this technique, so keep that in mind. If you desire 100% perfection or super tight brand new leather, then you'll need to reupholster the seat with brand new leather for more time, expense, and risk of not matching the other seats or the original color of the interior. However, keep in mind, if the leather is so chewed up or destroyed that a repair can't be done, then replacing the leather is the only option. Step six is a really important one. It's to decipher the specific color dye required to color match the material you're about to repair. 
First, find a naturally clean or unfaded area. In this case, it's the back of my seat. Then remove the FiberNew color detection kit. Inside, you'll find the Color Eye machine, clear gel, ultra sensitive scale, and glass discs. Squirt the gel on the surface that you're trying to measure, then place the glass disc over it to smooth out the surface for the cleanest reading. Then place the proprietary Color Eye tool over the glass and take a picture. After its measuring process is complete, the machine will give you a specific color code of what the eye has just seen. Is it 100% perfect all the time? No, but it gets you incredibly close. Then the technician can adjust ever so slightly based on the material and experience. However, in our case, it was actually 100% accurate on the first time we did it. So a lot of you are thinking, hey, it's black. How challenging can that be? But there's actually thousands of different variations of black. So to get it on the first try was pretty cool. Next, put the code from the Color Eye into the Fiber New Phone app, name the job and add some notes, then enter the point number. Once those numbers have been added, the exact color can be created when you're out in the field or in the garage based on the percentages given in the app for each respective color that's about to be mixed. It's ridiculously cool. Think of it like your own Home Depot paint matching machine in your pocket, but instead of the machine squirting out perfect measurements automatically, you are weighing and pouring it yourself out in the garage or on the road. So it's a pretty slick setup. Next, put the mixing cup on the scale and zero it out. Then simply follow along the app formula and specific weights of each color. In this case, black at 33.36 milliliters. Repeat the process with all of the requested dye colors, then mix well. Once the dye is ready, you're going to prep the surface you're about to dye. Next, we poured the dye into the reservoir and set the pressure to 30 pounds of air and gave a few test shots on the paper to make sure that the sprayer tip was clean, then laid down a few light layers of dye to the surface we just sanded. Once everything is dry, you'll notice that the color looks absolutely amazing, but the texture is missing. The sanded areas are super shiny compared to the original or unsanded areas. Here's why. Okay guys, at this point, the seat is looking really good. And there's a little interesting thing here called texturing. So that's kind of the next step. And what that means is you can see right here, there's a bit of texture. And on this area where we sanded, obviously there is no texture because we sanded it off. Same kind of concept is Maybe if your car had orange peel on it and then you wet sanded it, right? So the area that has orange peel, the lights reflecting and all these kind of crazy areas, the flat area where you've taken kind of sawed off all the peaks and valleys and now it's super flat, you're going to see a ton of reflection. You don't want that. You don't want two different things. And in this case, we now have to add in texture to the leather. It's a really cool process. Let me show you how. So this next step is where I was absolutely blown away with their technique and procedure. To match the texture, we have to basically reinstall orange peel, so to speak, to the leather. Again, this is just the best analogy I can make from my world of sanding and polishing paint. Fiber News products, techniques, and artistry when it comes to texturing is truly amazing and what makes the repairs really stand out from anything else. This is a fascinating and technical process using a ton of proprietary products and techniques from FiberNew, along with controlling the amount of air being sprayed to create varying size texture. To do this, we mixed multiple fiber new products together and then adjusted the airflow through the gun to create the orange peel look. Now, I won't bore you with the 500 small adjustments and special products being used to get it all to work, but when Brian was done with his magic, the sanded areas no longer looked sanded or shiny, which was incredible. Now, the very final step is the top matte to gloss top coat. In this case, I mixed the specific percentage of clear top coat to matte top coat to perfectly match the OEM level of sheen on my original seats before getting it ready to be sprayed as the final layer of protection. Think of it sort of like how clear coat is to the surface of your paint. Top coat is the last layer of protection sitting on top of the dye. Again, I'm not expecting anyone, including myself, to remember all of these nuances, but the goal here is just to get a glimpse of this unique profession and how technical a true pro repair can be. 
After each of the three coats, we dried the top coat with a blow dryer on low heat. Once done, the seat looked incredibly amazing, just like it was before. Just no way to know that it had been repaired or even dyed. And it felt exactly like it did before, meaning it wasn't stiff or brittle kind of feel. It was absolutely crazy. Then we reinstalled it and compared it to the rest of the unrepaired interior. Well guys, we're all done and the seat looks absolutely amazing. There's actually no discernible difference between the previous seat and this new sort of dyed seat. Now, I think normally it goes between 85, 90% uh, better. You're like, oh great, this is looking better. But of course it's not replacing the entire leather, but you're doing it at less than half the cost. In this particular case, I am overwhelmed because it actually looks better than the original seat. It's, per I mean, absolutely perfect. Again, it doesn't always happen that way, but when you get lucky and it works out perfectly, I'm not gonna complain. So the color matching is insane. It looks exactly like the door, matches the headrest, everything in here. I'll show you some pictures, but unbelievable. If you want some more information, it's fibernew.com. I'll put a link in the description. Of course, we'll have more things coming up. I'm very excited to be a part of the team and learning how to do this. Uh, it takes a little bit of effort here to understand all the nuances, but it's well worth it. Of course, if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, larry at ammonyc.com. I'm a happy boy right now. The R8 is looking amazing. Now it's time to go out for a drive. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.